it's Saturday and I am baking some scones right now. So this recipe, um, if I could talk, it'd be great. This recipe came to me from Grace, who lives in Australia and she's one of my viewers. And she told me about um, some scones that a friend of hers made for her. And Grace, I don't know your friend's name, otherwise I would mention her, but they're lemonade scones. Yeah. I'm really excited. Uh, let me go ahead and, sh they're in the oven, but let me go ahead and show you. Oh, they're baking right now. Wow, they're puffing up a lot. This is awesome. So it calls for three cups of self-rising flour, and boy, oh boy, they are self-rising. Um, a cup of cream and a cup of, sorry about that, something dripped on the glass there. Um, a cup of cream and a cup of lemonade. You just mix it together and then um, roll it out on a lightly floured surface and kind of pat it out into a, you know, in, in general, an oval or a circle or something. And then I cut it into little triangle shapes and put it on a lightly greased cookie sheet. And then the, um, well, she gave me the Fahrenheit temperature to cook and so it, it's, it sounds strange to those of us who use Fahrenheit because it's 392, 392 degrees. Um, usually we don't go that specific, but I figured if that works um, in Australia, then that's the temperature I'm going for here. So it's at 392 um, for 10 to 15 minutes. So I have it set for 10 and I'm gonna check it out at that point and then we'll see what happens when it's done. So here they are. Oh my gosh, they're so pretty. So thanks, Grace, and thank your friend for me. Hi, guys. Um, what day is it today? Monday. Um, so I'm super excited. I had told you guys that John got his vaccine because the hospital got theirs, and so he's already had both of his shots. His second one, um, he did get some aches and chills and a low-grade temperature um, just for one day. He didn't feel too terrible, though. He just felt a little achy. So anyway, he got that. And then um, I actually have an appointment to get my vaccine on Wednesday this week, like in two days. Um, the university got some, and yes, I'm, you know, officially retired through the state of Arizona, but I still teach for the university, which makes me an active employee, and they are getting enough vaccines to offer them to all of their active employees. So they didn't say I had to be full-time or anything like that. So. So I'm signed up to get my first shot on Wednesday. So then I was thinking, dang it, you know, now my mom, you know, I mean, she's the one who really needs it because of her age group. And um, we, and Arizona's just not doing a very good job of how they've organized the rollout of this. It's like not, there's like all these different places, like you can check certain grocery stores and certain pharmacies, and then you check with the county, and then you check with this particular doctor's office, and um, but not all doctor's offices, and so it's been crazy. So every day, she and I both have been going on online and checking all these different places to see if any appointments have come available. And um, I was just getting pretty frustrated with how my state is handling this. Um, well, anyway, we were together this morning. I was helping her at the gallery hang up some of her paintings. And when I got home, I checked again for her and she had checked again. And then she just happened to, on a whim, um, she decided she would just check again, like, uh, like a, an hour later, and boom, there was there was an appointment. She scheduled her appointment. It's going to be a week from Thursday, and it's at a grocery store. And um, oh, I think it was maybe a half hour later. She went on to that site just to see if she could. Um, there's a consent form you have to sign, and it wasn't working the to print it out when she made her appointment and she's she can go pick it up from the grocery store but but she um she went on there again to to look for that consent form and saw that all the appointments were booked and that was like within one hour of making these available so i'm so relieved that um that she has it and um 
and all three of us are going to have it. So super excited about that. And I don't know if you guys have seen this on the news, but I just saw today on Fox that um, just in the last three weeks that they've been rolling out these, I mean, obviously they were giving, you know, some people were getting vaccines before the end of the year, but um, they, since the real rollout has started, the number of, of new cases of COVID has dropped nationwide by 25%. So that is encouraging news. And hey you guys, I just got my vaccine. Yeah, headed over to the university. I actually got there early and they were able to get me in early and they had a really smooth system. So there was no wait at all. And um, yeah, it went, it went really well. Um, in fact, the, the shot itself, you know, hardly, I hardly felt the needle at all when they, you know, like put the medicine in my arm. Um, you know, I didn't feel any kind of stinging at all. I, my arm feels fine. John said his felt like a hammer was slammed into his arm after he had his shot, but I don't know how long after the shot he felt that. So I have my second dose appointment for exactly 28 days from today. And I guess my mom read somewhere, heard on the news, something that with this, uh, this uh, vaccine that I got is Moderna. And apparently you get 80% protection after your first dose and 94% protection after your second dose. And then, um, but that takes 20 days after to kick in. So, and then there, you know, there were some questions that, that I know, I know uh, Lori was saying something about, you know, how it, people have mentioned like, maybe it's possible for you to still get COVID after you have the vaccine. What I understand up about that is that you can apparently there's a slight chance but you get a really um mild for so you wouldn't get really sick from it and but and then people had concerns about whether you could spread that like if I had a really mild version of it and I don't really feel too bad but I'm a little under the weather what if I go around somebody who's not been vaccinated that's where the problem is because then I could give COVID to that person who would have a, who could have a stronger reaction because they haven't had the vaccine. So um, anyway, I'm just, I feel, you know, I feel really excited about this just because I feel like this is the start of us getting our lives back to normal. Can I hear an amen on that? Yeah. This week's bread, this is called Anadama bread and I haven't tasted it yet. It just got out of the oven. It has to sit for an hour before I can cut into it. But yum. <clears throat> and there's no way, John, I can eat all of this if I'm making one batch of bread a week. So my mom will probably get some of this. Maybe my neighbor will, uh, we'll see about it. It smells really good. Hi guys. I thought I'd give you an update on the first um, vaccine shot that I got. That was on Wednesday, and what time was it? Like around two that I had the shot. And my husband had said that when he got his, that his arm was really sore, but I just thought he was kind of being a baby <laughs> about it. Yeah. Um, and then I had talked to uh, a friend of mine who said that she felt a few hours after she got the shot, she felt like she'd just woken up from anesthesia. She felt really foggy and woozy and that she felt that way for a couple of days. So I was curious about how it was gonna make me feel. The shot itself didn't sting at all. I didn't even feel anything other than the poke of the needle. And um, then probably about two hours later, I felt like when I moved my arm, I felt like I had worked out the day before. You know how that goes? And um, John had gotten out some lidocaine patches. They, it's a topical lidocaine just to relieve pain. And he told me I should put one on. So I did. Um, I, did it help? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. But it really did get sore that night. Normally, I don't 
have, like when I get a, a flu shot, I don't feel, I, like I can touch the area and not be able to feel that I have, have gotten a shot. So, but um, it was definitely feeling sore. In the night, I woke up when I rolled over on that side. So that's one recommendation I would have for you. Rather than choosing your non-dominant arm, I would say choose the side that you don't sleep on. If you're a side sleeper, don't choose that side because it definitely woke me up and I did not want to sleep on that side. And then um, the next day in the morning, it was very sore. Um, yeah, worse than how you feel when you've had a you know, a heavy workout the day before and your muscles are sore. It was, it was very sore the next day. Not red, not swollen or anything like that, um, but very sore. And, but by that afternoon, it was, it was way, way, way less. And then today, uh, it, I can, I can't even feel it. When I move my arm around, I don't, I don't feel it at all. If I touch it, it feels I wouldn't even say, I wouldn't even describe it as being sore. I would just say that I could just kind of tell where the injection site was. So, Hey you guys, uh, it is Tuesday and I am heading over to um, get a couple of scans done. I have to get an MRI and also a bone density scan, a DEXA scan so the the DEXA well, I, I recently had my endocrinology appointment um, I have that once a year and um, she wants me to just get you know sort of a, a baseline bone density exam and then the MRI you may remember me telling you about this in the past I have a benign tumor on my pituitary gland and you know it's just this tiny thing but <laughs> but the pituitary gland is pretty tiny too and uh it, it's it doesn't th there really isn't any concern about the tumor except that if it grows it could press on the optic nerve and cause blindness so they check it every few years and i think the last time i had it done was maybe three years ago and at that time, the radiologist who read this, the scan said that he thought that the tumor had gone away, which is amazing. You know, I've been having this thing checked out for, I don't know, 12 years or more. And, uh, but, but anyway, so, so he said that it, it's, you know, it looked like it had disappeared. But the endocrinologist, and you know, she was kind of thinking at that point, three years ago, she said, well, you know, we probably don't need to look at this thing anymore. Um, or maybe one more time to make sure it's still not there. But then she, apparently there have been some people who have had this same scenario and then they, it, it comes back, you know, and so, um, or maybe it was a misreading or something. So all that to say, she wants me to get that. So all that to say that um, I'm going to do that and then I'm, I have to pick up some milk at the grocery store because I'm, I'm gonna be making another batch of bread this weekend. This one calls, calls for eggs and bread, which is kind of unusual for, or eggs and bread, eggs and milk, which is kind of unus unusual for a bread recipe. Uh, so it should be interesting. It also has dried fruit in it. So maybe it's more like a dessert bread or breakfast bread. I, I don't know. But it is a Greek celebration bread that I'm going to be making. So I have to stop there. And I'm also going to the post office because I have Valentine presents for Diana and Ariel and their sisters. So they're older sisters. So I just have little, you know, just little things for them. Hey, so I wanted to tell you this story about the bread I made last week. Um, it was, I don't know if I mentioned this um, in the clip I did of it, but it was, it's called Anadama bread. And the cookbook I have, which is called The Bread Baker's Apprentice, has stories for each bread, each kind of bread. It tells the history of it. If there's any kind of story behind the bread, it tells that. Um, but last week's bread, which was really good, it has has molasses in it and 
uh, cornmeal and you kind of sit this mixture of cornmeal and water um, overnight and then put that into the bread and everything so um, anyway so it has a really nice crunch on the out the inside is really soft and the outside it's got a little crunch of cornmeal and just it was very yummy so okay anadama so the story behind that one is that um, it originated in Rockport, Massachusetts, I think in the late 1800s or early 1900s. And the story is that there's this man who came home from work at the end of the day. And I've, I've actually heard two stories on this. Um, the first is that he came home and his wife was just lazy and hadn't done anything all day. I found that story on YouTube and then the one that's in the cookbook said that he came home and his wife had actually packed up and left him so uh, he gets home so let's go with that story um, he gets home and she had taken pretty much everything in the house and she'd left for him a pot of cornmeal mush on the stove and a container of molasses so he's really ticked off and he takes the cornmeal mush and molasses and mixes it with some flour and yeast to make some bread for himself. And while he's doing this, he's yelling. His wife's name is Anna. And he's saying, Anna, damn her. Anna, damn her. And so the neighbors could hear him, but they thought he was saying, Anna, damn And so the bread, which became very popular, it was called Anadama bread and it is still on menus in coffee shops and restaurants in Rockport, Massachusetts because of its neat little history and because it's actually a very tasty bread but I thought that was that was kind of a fun one this one that I made today um, I mean it's I didn't I didn't read the whole thing on it but it is there were three variations of this Greek celebration bread and it's a bread that's kind of that's made when there's a big thing going on um, for parties and stuff like that so it's kind of so I want to show you what I have been doing um, I've really been wanting to grow plants in the house but this house it doesn't have a lot of great light. The, my office actually has some nice indirect light. And then this entryway, this front entryway here, um, has some light. Uh, my mom had a plant that was on a little piece of furniture kind of thing right there. But since it's winter, I wanted to give my plants a little bit, you know, a little bit more light. So. Um, and I also wanted to get some plants that were, um, so low light, that they, they, they don't need full sun or bright sun or a lot of sun, and then also ones that are pet friendly, that are not toxic. So here's what I got. Now, I always had these Christmas cactus plants. I've got two of them. This one blooms white, this one kind of an orangey red, and um, they just haven't been doing well the last couple of years so I repotted them um same pots I put them in but new soil and figured that if I started giving them a lot of sun or more sun they've been getting let's see what happens so um so I had those already and then the rest are all new let me talk about this one first I got this yesterday when I was in Sprouts and I just decided to get myself a valentine present this I think it's like $7.99 for this little miniature rose plant and you're supposed to plant it outside um, so it said on the instructions or when I looked it up online it said about a month before the first frost you plant it in the ground so I'll keep it as an indoor plant until then um, but so cute and then let's see I got this plant succulent that's called a string of pearls and um, that's supposed to get like big and long long things hanging down can't remember what this one is called, but it stays kind of small and bushy. It'll get a little bit bigger than that, maybe like an inch higher. Um, so that's, I thought was pretty. This one, I have two of these and it's called a prayer plant. And it's, let me show you on the other one, this one here. So I think it's because this, the leaves um, kind of when a new leaf is coming, it starts out closed and then it, 
opens up. I kind of got the impression that they're supposed to close, that the, the leaves close at night, but they don't. This one is called a cal calathea, calathea, I don't know. This one will get tall. It'll get like two feet tall. And so that's going to be pretty. And I guess that's it. So I've been moving these over here every morning um, until the, you know, until the, the light kind of changes directions. And then I have different places in the house where these plants go. And I hope it's going to be successful. I just got them a couple of weeks ago and so far so good. Another dusting of snow today. Not a lot. But it's pretty. And look at this. I made my first beef wellington. It came out so great. It was our Valentine's dinner and um, really not very hard to make.